Hey guys, so this week's uh, video is going to be all about what I think your next watch should be. And like most wa uh, watch enthusiasts or people who are starting to get into watches, uh, I feel like we're always thinking about, hey, what's the next one? I can tell you for sure, um, I'm not very rich. I can't afford the $20,000, $30,000 watches. So obviously for me, it's going to be watches that are affordable. Now I know there are... There's a school of thought that, hey, if instead of spending small amounts of money for watches that are not as grand, you know, uh, you can save your money and then buy it, have a, have a big purchase. But I feel that sometimes I want to be able to buy a watch now. And the watch that I can afford now tends to be a watch that's more affordable. And I've been looking at the below $1,000 price category. Uh... And as I talked about in my video in the past, the Christopher Ward watch was phenomenal. It was a phenomenal find. And I feel like this particular price category uh, caters to dive watches. There's so many dive watches. I feel like, yeah, they have multiple functions. They're considered tool watches. And they fit this category, this category really well. But um, now I already have a dive watch. I think I have like three dive watches in total. I'm looking for something different. I keep coming across Tissot PRX, and I've looked at multiple other watches. Some are a little bit more expensive, some are a little bit cheaper, but I feel like this Tissot PRX um, again and again has been showing up. Uh, and I finally got to try it on at one of the local uh, shops that we have here in Ohio, and uh, I really liked it. I felt like the bracelet was phenomenal. Uh, it's an affordable watch. Once again, it's less than 1000 I think the going rate for the PRX Powermatic Automatic uh, watch is about $650 here in the U.S. It's relatively easy to obtain. I mean, you can go to a local jewelry shop here, uh, at least where I'm living, and be able to pick up this watch. And it's very popular. I feel like the watch community, at least judging from the YouTube videos online, uh, has really uh, embraced this particular watch. And, and uh, it's different from the normal divers, you know, that you usually see in this price range. PRX, by the way, uh, stands for precision, robustness, and the X stands for 10. So 10 atmosphere of water resistance. That's what the PRX stands for. They're kind of redoing their design uh, the, uh, based on their original design in 1978 when these type of watches started to uh, become popular. And fashion tends to repeat itself throughout the years and I think that's uh, what's happening here. People want this, uh, this type of bracelet, this type of watch now. Uh, once again and it's the and that's why it's been so so popular. Um, it's, it has a hint of sportiness, like I said, because of the uh, 100 meters of water resistance, uh, the in integrated bracelet. Um, now, I think for a lot, lot of people, because you can buy the quartz version for only, I said, $350, like half the price, a lot of people are going to be between the, the, the quartz version versus the automatic version. I think for me personally, it's a no-brainer. I would go for the automatic version. Uh, I've heard from some people that the course version, the second hand does not exactly hit the hour indicators or the minute indicators, which would drive me insane. That and I just, I hate the clicking thing. Um, I also love the waffle design that the automatic comes in, um, but the course does not. The course has, has like this sunburst effect, which to some people can be a great thing. That, that's fine. If you enjoy that kind of thing, great. Uh, I also like gears. You know, it's kind of like having a heartbeat. You know, I like that idea of uh, having something on your wrist uh, that... Uh, is based on mechanics and is this integrated thing uh, that you're wearing. But if you want to save some money and you're okay with the quartz movement uh, and you want this wonderful bracelet and this wonderful uh, kind of 1980s based design, uh, then go for it. You can get the $350, save some money, and have a new watch uh, to kind of play with. 
But if you do go with the coarse route, I feel like the Tiffany blue uh, color is, is the way to go. It's very eye-catching. Uh, it looks really unique on the wrist. I, I had the chance to try that on too, actually, and I really enjoyed it. If they made that version, but in an automatic one, I would have probably got that one. Right now, what I'm thinking about, uh, for me personally, is the blue uh, version of it. I think it just looks so classy, So uh, and, w and on the wrist, it's just it looks amazing. Uh, the way that the bracelet plays with the light, uh, and the way that the, the blue just kind of pops out, it, it's the one that's working for me. I think it has a classic look. Uh, blue color has been really popular. I feel like a lot of watches are start, or a lot of watch brands are starting to release uh, watches with blue uh, dials, and uh, rightfully so. They've been really popular. Uh, the the automatic uh, version of the TX uh, the Tissot PRX uh, has about 80 hours of power reserve, which is fairly decent. Uh, and as I mentioned before, uh, it has uh, 100 meters of water resistance. So 80 hours of power reserve is, is pretty damn good for a sub thousand dollar watch, in my opinion, based on what I've seen in the market. Um, it unfortunately, the bracelet is really good. Like I said, it plays on the light really well. It's this uh, integrated design, uh, which is the thing now these days. Uh, it does have a butterfly clasp which is not great so you can't really there's no micro adjustments to this uh, but once again like I said the bracelet has good quality has good finish and worth it for under under thousand dollars the case is another I think great feature Tissot has done a wonderful job at high, you know really highlighting the case the finishing is excellent uh, it has a see-through case back sapphire crystal it's made out of uh, 316L steel, uh, so good grade steel. Uh, lug to lug, it's about uh, 44.2 millimeters, um, but really about 51 millimeters uh, because the end legs kind of stick out. Uh, the height is about 10.5 millimeters, which on the wrist I feel like will sit very nicely. My uh, uh, Christopher Ward was about, so I think, 11 or 12, and uh, that's easy to hide under a cuff, kind of slips in, but like I said, I, I kind of have had enough with the divers. I want to try something new, and I feel like a 10.5 millimeter height of a, of a watch that looks a little bit different can slide under the cuff very well. It has somewhat of a thin bracelet as well. Uh, when, when I tried it on, it didn't, it didn't feel cheap, but it felt like it was sturdy, well-made, but it wasn't thick like some of those thick bracelets get, so that's a good thing. Uh, it, it has a uh, crown, a uh, uh, push-pull crown, which is 4.5 millimeters, which I don't really like. I think that's a little too small. I I, I think I'm more of a 6 through 7 millimeter kind of guy for these push-pull crowns. Uh, they're a little bit more comfortable and easier to maneuver. But once again, it's not a dive watch, and it's fine. It goes well with the design of the case and the watch. And as I, as I mentioned before, it has the Powermatic 80 inside. Um, it's Tissot's take on the ETA uh, 28 to 24 movement. It's reliable, but it's not super crazy. Uh, it's not super accurate, but uh, it gets the job done. They have this really cool polishing around the bezel that uh, reflects light really well. Uh, along with uh, a brush finish to the other components of the of the case. Overall, very well made watch. Um, the loom is there, but uh, is not a watch that you would pick up because it has great loom. Uh, and once again, this is more of a dressy feel to this watch. Yeah, it has some sporty components, but it has overall the face of it at least has more of a dressy side. So technically, they could have not gone uh, with any loom at all. But it's good that they have it. Um, so overall, I think this might be my next watch, uh, is the reason of this video. And I think for people who are out there like me, who are looking for an affordable next watch that, you know, isn't a dive watch, but can kind of, uh, scratch that itch of, uh, of having a well-made, well-finished watch for under thousand dollars while we start to kind of build our collection and, uh, you don't want to wait for five years, uh, until you can afford it, uh, you know, like like one of those Omegas or Rolexes or um, Tudors, for example, and you want something now <clears throat> to kind of uh, build up that collection. Um, I think as a beginner in this watch world, I think a collection that I'm aiming for is about 10 watches. Or, you know, at first I have to get to the number five. So I think of it, 10 would be my max. Five is where I want to get to within the next 
two years. Right now I have about three or four. So I'm looking to kind of fill that gap. I'm done with divers. Uh, my next thing is going to be something a little bit different. So for me, does this watch meet my four good watch criteria? So, you know, as I mentioned in the prior video, uh, the first part of that is looks. Does it have great looks? And I think Tissot PRX Paramedic 80 in particular, the blue one, wonderful looks. I think the bracelet, the case is designed well, the blue pops, um, very clean design to the face. It looks great. Great finish. They have wonderful attention to detail for a sub thousand dollar watch. Uh, the bracelet is phenomenal. It is a butterfly class bracelet, but uh, that's a small uh, thing. I don't enjoy those. I like the buckles, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with it. I had a chance to kind of play with that um, uh, bracelet buckle and it was fine. I can live with the butterfly clasp. Uh, the, the AP look, you know, if you're into that, that can also work for it for an affordable price. I know some people don't like that homage thing. I, I don't think this is an homage though. I think this watch is doing its own thing. Uh, the blue is classic. Uh, it's relatively thin and easy to wear, and it's great for uh, most wrists. I, I, and now I will say that with a caveat, because I, I believe this particular watch, because it kind of hangs um, from lug to lug and, and protrudes out a little bit, is meant for bigger wrists. Now, I have a little bit of a freakish wrist. It's more than eight. Uh, it, it works well for me. Uh, I think for most people, uh, if you have a, a bigger wrist size, it will work great. If you have a smaller wrist, that you might want to try it on before you go for this watch. The next category is function. Is it a functional watch? Now, uh, do remember this is not a diver, as I said that before, but it does have 100 meters of water resistance, which is good for most things. I mean, I'm not going to be going in the swimming pool with this. So at most, I'll be wait wearing this to work or to the office. Uh, maybe if it rains, uh, great, you don't have to worry about it. You can do the dishes, you don't have to worry about it. It can be dressy and sporty at the same time. I feel like I can easily wear this to dinner. Uh, now, I don't have the watch. I, I, I haven't worn it to dinner, but I feel like when I tr tried it on, looking at the design, looking at how it plays on the light and uh, how thin it is, I think it can go under the cuff really, really well without any issues. So it's somewhat accurate. Uh, it can work in different different settings. Uh, so the function is there, I've, I feel like, for this watch. They get a check mark for that. Uh, the next up is quality. You know, it's Swiss made. Tissot is a known brand. Great finish, great polish. They also come with a two-year warranty. So I feel like the quality component is there. Uh, for a sub $1,000 watch, I feel like the steel, uh, the cuts, um, the finishing, the face, uh, the movement are all uh well made and uh worth the money and the last part of uh my uh four criteria for good watches are the brand you know you want to really see what you're buying into you don't want to just go and get any cheap old watch uh which it's not hard to do honestly you can get a really cheap watch that pays an homage to rolex if you're into that uh, if you don't really care but i think brand is important because you're you're paying somewhat for the brand as well you don't want a, to put a name on your wrist that you don't support uh, Tissot uh, has a lot of history behind it they began in 1853 uh, they're known to make world's uh, first non-magnetic watch um, they have sponsorship uh, ships all out all throughout um, for example they sponsor uh, basketball they sponsor they have sponsored NBA Swiss national team uh, Chinese uh, basketball association uh, they even sponsored uh, the 2022 World Games. So they have sponsorship deals. Uh, they have brand ambassadors that are known. Uh, now, I'm not a, you know, a person who buys into the whole celebrity thing, but uh, and I like the fact that they're able to approach well-known people in the field, like Tony Parker from the NFL, uh, Virat Kohli, who's the, the well-known uh, uh, person from India who, who plays cricket. Deepika Panonka, who's a, an actress, uh, an Indian or a Bollywood actress. Uh, these are known people. People see them in the in their arts and, you know, they, they know them. They feel like they can trust their opinion. And that's fine. You know, brand uh, uh, ambassadorship is important for marketing. And, and it is what it is. And uh, uh, Tiso is also part of the Swatch Group. So, you know, you're going to get good movements in terms of ETA. You know, that's the big Swatch Group umbrella. Um so I feel like for the brand category, they, they satisfy that, you know, it gives you somewhat of a history. 
um, and uh, uh, security in terms of uh, that this brand has been around a while. They know what they're doing. Uh, they're a reliable brand, uh, and you can get behind uh, what they're trying to kind of convey to the public. So overall, I would say I think this is going to be my next watch. And and maybe uh, people who are considering watches under a thousand dollars, maybe this should be uh, your next watch. You know, uh, don't hesitate to share your thoughts in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about this uh, Tissot PRX, uh, the Powermatic 80. Uh, like I said, I'm not, I, I don't think the course version is bad. I really like some of the colors, uh, but I'm not a course guy. I think I had enough of that before I went into the automatic watches. It's just, I like, I like gears. I like automatic watches. So for me, uh, I think I'm, I'm kind of done with course watches, but I feel like this T Tissot PRX Powermatic 80 would be a phenomenal next watch. Um, and some of you might not agree. I, I think some people are, are uh, buy into this like, hey, hold off, don't make small purchases, just save uh, for like three, four years and or two years, whatever, and just buy a big watch after that. And that's fine too. I'm not saying you can't do that. That's that that's awesome if that's what you want to do. Um, but I think for people like me who are ready to make their new purchase, this this watch might be it. And I've looked around a lot. You know, I've looked at a lot of micro brands. Uh, I've compared uh, different things. Uh, I'm, and I've even looked at pre-owned watches. You know, I would love uh, to uh, uh, get a Longines. I, I know there some of their Hydro uh, Hydro Conquest or Conquests are available for around a thousand dollars, but they start looking more and more like divers. Um, and I'm at the moment, I'm tired of that look. I want something different. Uh, and I, I honestly sometimes hesitate to get a used watch. I like starting fresh and seeing those scratches and seeing those daily wears kind of uh, come onto the watch because I know I've, I've this watch that I've, I've put through the ringer or I've used it. So it kind of has a personal uh, history uh, that I've shared with a watch. So I like to see that as I kind of grow with the watch. Um, so that's my take on it. Thanks for listening. Bye.